Welcome, everyone, um, staff and councillors. Yeah. And this is the agenda of the ordinary meeting of Denport City Council, and it's been live streamed, and it's Monday, the 25th of May at 5 p.m. Council acknowledges and pays respects to the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as the traditional and original owners and continuing custodians of, the land, of this land on which we meet. All persons in attendance are advised that it's council policy to record council meetings in accordance with council's digital recording policy. The recording of this meeting will be made available to the public on council's website for a minimum period of six months. This council meeting will be live streamed to the council, Denport City Council's YouTube channel and can also be accessed um, on YouTube later. Item 1.0 is apologies. Um, we don't have any official apologies as yet. Um, I understand um, Councillor Ennis is not yet, has not yet joined the meeting. Um, I'm sure he'll be with us shortly. Um, item 2.0 is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest in any item on this agenda? I have an item declaring an interest in item 4.1, which is a planning authority matter. Are there any other items of declarations of interest? Yeah, Mayor, Councillor Perry, I'll declare an interest in agenda item 5.5. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Are there any other items of um, interest declared? No? Item 3.0 is procedural matters, 3.1.1, council meeting of the 27th of April. Do I have a move of those minutes? So, so moved, Councillor Perry. Councillor Laycock, happy to second that. Laycock, any comments, questions? No, no comments, Mayor. Councillor Laycock? Nothing to add. No other comments? Councillor Perry to close? Consider it closed. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? Motion's carried unanimously. Item 3.2.1 is public. Uh, 3.2 is our public question time. And item 3.2.1, responses to questions raised at prior meetings. There were no questions that needed to have responses after that meeting. So there's nothing there. Item 3.2.2 are questions on notice from the public. Um, and I would ask for a mover of the motion for those, please. That council accept, um, endorse those comments. So moved. Councillor Hollister. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Laycock. Thank you. Any comments, Councillor Hollister? Nothing further to add. Anything to add, Councillor Laycock? Nothing further. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Yes, Mayor, you do. Councillor Murphy? Um, Mayor, this relates to the response to question three on page six of item 3.2.2. Um, question three, uh, the question B. Um, I I would be the opinion that that question has been answered incorrectly. Um, having in light of read all the information in relation to those particular matters, I believe that the response is incorrect and the response should be yes. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Any other comments? Councillor Hollister to close. Consider it closed. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. oh, yeah, I'm against as well. I, I, I... Okay, I'll ask for those in favour. Um, point, of order, point of order, Mayor. Yes. I, I just need to make the point clear to the councillors that um, the information that is going out is on behalf of us. It may be provided by the council officers, but at the end of the day, as councillors, we endorse the responses that go to those members of the public who have written to us. And we need to think very carefully as to 
whether we support the information being accurate or inaccurate. So I would advise the councillors to actually double check in relation to that particular, if they're happy with that particular response to that particular question. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. That is what I've asked, that you endorse those um, responses. Um, item 3.2, there were questions on notice and the recommendation has been moved and seconded. Um, Councillor Hollister, did you want to add anything to close the debate? Oh, I beg your pardon, I've already done that. I will ask for um, those in favour and I'll go around um, the room as in I'm looking at. So I will, Councillor Alexio. Um, against. Against. Uh, Councillor Jarman? Against. Councillor, uh, where am I at now? Councillor Murphy? Against. Councillor Laycock? For. Thank you. Councillor Milbourne? For. Uh, Excuse me, Mayor? Yes. Uh, it's Councillor Ennis. I'll just let you know that I'm here. Thank you, Councillor Ennis. We're voting on item 3.2, the recommendation to accept the uh, responses to the questions on notice. Point Thank of you. order there, Mayor. Councillor Ripley. Point of order, Mayor. Should he also hear in relation to um, the response or the question that was put in relation to those responses? Will, if he has, has not already heard it before he votes? I, I would ask Councillor Ennis to perhaps abstain from this question, uh, from responding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Councillor Hollister's for. Councillor Hollister. Councillor... Councillor Rockliffe for. Um, Councillor Perry. I'm against as well on that particular point. Um, so it's four. It's four all. So the motion is lost. Is that correct, Councillor? Um, Mr. General Manager. That's correct, Mayor. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Can I suggest, Mayor, maybe a um, a follow-up motion? to at least answer the questions that councillors are comfortable with. Thank you. Um, deleting the answer to question. Councillor Murphy, would you like to move an amended motion then? A follow-up motion? Responding oh, motion. to that. Yes, please. Happy to move that. Responding what? to all except question two. Of... Question 3B. Thank you. Councillor Murphy has moved. Um, Jackie, have you got that? So the motion is all uh, all questions be ex questions and responses be accepted apart from 3B. Correct. Correct. Yes, I've got that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Do I have a seconder? I'll second that. I'll second Councillor Perry, I heard. Uh, yeah. Did you want to add anything else, Councillor Murphy? Nothing further there. I think we've discussed it enough. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Um, yeah, I'd just add, I don't think the response is a flat out yes, but I think we, we perhaps could have answered that in a little more detail. But, um, you know, I'm waving between no and yes, but it's certainly, I don't think no is quite adequate on that occasion. So that's all I could add. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Murphy, happy to close the debate? Consider it closed, Mayor. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 3.2.3 are questions without notice from the public, and we do have some for um, me to read. From Christopher Mills at 52 Caroline Street, East Devonport. Question one. The general manager this week cited a letter dated the 28th of August 2017 to confirm that 54 Caroline Street is a landscape zone. Would the general manager please use the same citation to confirm that, quote, 
The removal of the trees may cause some destabilisation of the land. And that is in, in, in the commas. And question two from the same source. The general manager has also stated that the land at 54 Caroline Street is a reserve. However, it doesn't appear to be included in the DCC public land register as a reserve. Could council clarify the ownership of this land? I'll pass through to the general manager to respond to that, please. Uh, yes, through you, Mayor. Um, I think we've previously provided this response to Mr Mills, but the, the title for the land in question um, remains in the name of the original developer. Um, the transfer to council never formally occurred. Um, therefore, the, the land isn't actually listed on council's public land register. But um, council is maintaining the land as, as a public reserve um, as per the intent of the subdivision. And it's noted on the title as a, as a reserve. Um, and look, in regard to the land slips status, um, there's really nothing further we can add. It's, it's, it has that status as a low level um, land slip area. Um, we're aware of that classification. There was a number of trees on the reserve that were nearing the end of their life and the decision was made back in November to remove those trees. That's occurred. Uh, the trunks were left in the ground to avoid unnecessary destabilisation and um, replanting of the area is occurring. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Atkins. Um, question from Bob Bellicott, 11 Cocker Place, Devonport. Subject, COVID-19 crisis, possible reductions in remuneration, proposed assistance to ratepayers and rent relief for prominent place tenants. Question one, Mayor and Councillors, taking into consideration that we have been continually encouraged to make some form of sacrifice during the COVID-19 pandemic, a, did, this, did those on the Council's COVID-19 Response Committee give consideration to recommend that councillors and senior staff take a pay cut, similar to that which the CEO of Cradle Coast Authority, Mr Darrell Connolly, announced as per the advocate on the 18th of May, i.e. 10 to 20 per cent, and B, if not, was it because of, in some instances, due to government employment regulations, the reduction in pay is not permitted? And if that is so, would Council consider donating to the Mayor's Charitable Trust amounts as per the above example? Question two. Mayor, please inform who on Council will be assessing the necessary very personal financial affairs of those who will be in the unfortunate situation of seeking more assistance other than the deferments recently announced in regard to rate payments and other Council costs. Uh, question three. Um, as they're all connected, I'll also include this question. Other than the significant amount of $40,000 council will waive for food business licence fees, what is the estimated loss of revenue due to assistance that will be given to the tenants in Provital Place? Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. Does council have an enterprise agreement in place which is ratified through Fair Work, through the Fair Work Commission um, under law? Council is required to pay employees in courts with this agreement. Um, council allowances are set by the Tasmanian Industrial Commission, which sits within the Department of Justice with the state government. Um, the decision on whether to receive the allowance is a matter for the individual. The hardship, council has adopted a policy to support the community. Um, given the significant value of the support required, this is a a more appropriate approach than the Mayor's Charitable Trust Fund. Um, those applications for hard, hardship assistance will be assessed by um, decisions being referred to full council. And in regard to rent relief for commercial tenants in Provador Place and also for any council facilities, um, we're negotiating um, suitable relief depending on their circumstances and, and as required under the Federal Government's Code of Conduct for landlord-tenant relationships during the pandemic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr Atkins. Um, I have a question from Jenny Clare at 57 Gun Street, Devonport. Question one, what is the total expenditure Council has incurred and estimates will be incurred, estimates will be incurred in response to the COVID-19 crisis? 
Question two, has the council's ability to respond been hampered by the current debt of approximately $53 million? And question three, how does the DCC's COVID-19 response compare with that of the other councils in Tasmania? Um, again, I'll hand over to the general manager. Yeah, thanks, Mayor, through you. Uh, I guess there's no question the impact of COVID-19 on the Devonport City Council is, is significant and will be significant. Um, being an urban council, you know, we rely heavily on the commercial and retail sectors and, and those sectors have been the hardest hit by the pandemic. Um, Devonport typically generates a high percentage of its own revenue and is not dependent on government operating grants. But, um, you know, but reven revenue streams like parking, fees, regional facility, higher facilities, Taswater dividends have all been um, significantly impacted and, and will affect Council's bottom line. Um, the current forecast at this stage is a deficit of in the order of one and a half million for the 1920 financial year. Uh, in regard to the debt, Council or the cost of finance is really only a small part of Council's total expenditure. So I think the answer is is no, it hasn't impacted on council response and still in a position to pay the um, the interest and principal of, of our loan borrowings. And the last part of the question about um, support for the community, I, I guess the research shows that you know, local government has limited capacity in stimulating the local economy in, in comparison to state and federal governments um, due to our size. But one of the best approaches um, is to bring forward capital expenditure and the government is encouraging councils to do that. I think Devonport Council is fortunate that the Living City Waterfront precinct did Precinct is ramp, ramping up, and, and um, you know, with the, the hotel and the the um, council-funded park totaling 57 million in construction activity, um, there's going to be a, a significant benefit for the local economy as we recover from the pandemic. The research shows that you know every dollar spent in construction flows back through the the local economy two and a half times. So um, the timing couldn't be better in that regard, and, and council is committed to to funding that activity and, and supporting the, the local economy in that way. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Atkins. Um, question from Douglas Janney at 23 Watkinson Street, Devonport. Question one, when is the council going to maintain the fascia on the old library building, as it is looking very shabby? And question two refers to capital expenditure, page 260. On tonight's agenda, that capital expenditure is at 37.8 of the total budget available, and with only two months left to the end of the financial year. While some monies will be carried over, this is still a dismal performance. And the question is, why has there been such an under expenditure? Again, Mr. Atkins. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mayor. Look, Council doesn't currently have any plans for any major maintenance or improvements of the facade or of the old library building. Um, in regard to the capital expenditure, um, yeah, the report in the agenda is as of the end of April. Um, there's still quite a few capital projects that are currently underway and that will be completed by the end of June, by the end of the financial year. However, it's fair to say the, um, the bulk of the unspent money from this year's capital program relates to the Living City Waterfront project, which will continue over um, certainly through most or all of next financial year. Thank you. Um, and final questions are from Malcolm Garlam at 4 Barmont Drive, Mine Debtor. Question one. In response to my question relating to Providor Place in the current agenda, is it true that Council's impotence to recover, recoup the debt directly relates to an unenforceable head lease agreement? Council responded no accordingly, despite warnings from concerned ratepayers at the time was the 194147 dollar loss of rent due to Council's failure to conduct proper due diligence as to the newly registered head leasee company's ability to pay rent and or Council's failure to procure suitable securities to minimise any potential losses. Question two, if the write-off of the $194,147 of unpaid rent under the initial head lease agreement on Provenal Place did not result from an unenforceable lease agreement, failure to properly assess the newly registered company's ability to pay the agreed rent, 
and or failure to procure adequate securities to minimise any potential losses, then why did Council write off the total debt? And question three, with Council acknowledging that at the 2019-20 uh, financial year budget time it considered in relation to the $194,147 rent owing from Provador Place that Council decided not to make an allowance for income, which potentially may not have been paid, while at the same time a rate increase was necessary. Accordingly, will Council acknowledge that the rate increase was in fact necessary to protect the bottom line and once again turn to the ratepayers to foot the cost of Provador Place losses as well as services? Given the reaction from fellow councillors um, to this response earlier, um, I will take that on notice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item 3.3, questions on notice from councillors. There are none at the time of uh, the agenda and there are none now. Item 4.0, planning authority matters. I will announce that Council intends to act as a planning authority under the Land Use Planning and Approvals Act of 1993 for the consideration of the Agenda Item 4.1. Council is required by Regulation 8.3 of the Local Government Meeting Procedures Regulations 2015 to deal with items as a planning authority under the Looper 1993 in a sequential manner. The following item is to be dealt with at this meeting of Council in its capacity as a planning authority. Item 4.1, PA 2020.0051, residential multiple dwellings times two at 37 Leary Avenue, Stony Rise. And I will close out the meeting now. Thank you. I think. Thank you, Mayor. Just let me push the button. So we've got the Mayor leaving the meeting at the moment and uh, Councillor Ennis has sent me a message asking if he could also declare an interest in this item. So he's going to now, I'm assuming, leave the meeting as yep. well. Goodbye. Leaving now. Tom will call you back, Councillor Ennis. Thank you. Um, so uh, item 4.1, sorry, residential, uh, the multiple dwellings pod 237 Leary Avenue, Stony Rise is what we're discussing now. Um, so, could I have a mover on that motion currently, please? Uh, Chair, Councillor it's Councillor Perry speaking. Uh, I'd yes, like Councillor Perry. I'd like to move an alternate motion, which has been distributed, um, or the reasons for that have been distributed um, to fellow councillors this afternoon. Now, I understand um, Jackie, Jackie has a, a copy of that amended motion, so if she would if she'd be able to put that up on the screen. Uh, it's up on the screen now, Councillor Perry. Thank you. Um, so you're moving that motion, the new motion? Moving, I'm moving that motion that's on the screen as we speak, yes. Thank you. Could I have a seconder, please? Se Councillor Murphy to second. Thanks, Councillor Murphy. Uh, we've got that up there now. Um, I'm assuming that everybody has had the chance to read this new uh, alternate resolution from Councillor Perry. So, Councillor Perry, if you'd like to speak to it, please. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, when, when I read the the agenda and had a look at this item, um, I, I thought I thought this now this is a really good development. Uh, there are a couple of areas where it fell short, and then when I got to the end of the um, end of the reading, it, I um, obviously detected or well, not detected read that the the uh, recommendation was for for council to refuse to refuse the application. So I went back through and I, I deduced that the, the two key areas for, or the two reasons for deduce or, or for uh, refusing the uh, re the application was um, frontage, uh, set front setback, um, and also a setback to the rear on the western side um, where we have uh, storm water main. Uh, I thought that if we could, we could potentially change change those uh, setbacks. To fall within guidelines, then then we could reconsider this, um, and pretty much in every other area, it, it met the it met the performance criteria that it needed to. And and, and another one was the 1.7. Where I'm, I'm just reading off my notes here. It was the was the uh, the provision of a 1.7 metre high screen along the side decks facing each other at the middle level of the development of the dwelling, which the the new um, Recommendation or the alternate recommendation has included. 
So there's the recommendation in in front of you all. I think that now puts it put this puts this application into yes, we can consider approving this. Um, and I'll be interested to see what others have to say about it. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Perry. Uh, Councillor Murphy, if you'd like to speak to the motion, the new motion. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Councillor Perry. And um, this one obviously quite a tricky one, taking into consideration that um, the past history in this particular area. Uh, I think the recommendations that uh, Councillor Perry has made in this motion are sensible. More importantly, the onus is then put back onto the developer as to whether he wishes to comply. So it's not a green light for the development to go ahead. It's a it's a, a requirement for him to adhere to the planning scheme in relation to uh, the easement, the setbacks, the variation of the setbacks from the front and the prov uh, provision of the privacy screens. I think that, um, you know, obviously that potentially has the... Um, an impact for them to change the development. Um, so it will be interesting to see. As I said, I think these are sensible uh, and it, it sort of brings us in line with the Act. Um, so I, I don't have any issue with those and, and wholeheartedly support them. Thanks, Councillor Murphy. Now, I do notice that Councillor Milburn at the moment has put her hand up via online. So I'd let her speak next, if I may. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, look, I do have to apologise. I hadn't had a chance to check my emails before the meeting. Um, Understand. So I do apologise for that. Um, I, I'm not quite sure whether the, the extra, extra um, motion is required because I would have thought that's what the initial recommendation to not let it go forward as it was is saying anyway. Um, anyhow... Um, I do have a question. Um, if you can indulge me, it is, it, it's um, associated with one of the questions or one of the things raised um, in the notes about people buying in that area um, uh, on, the, on the subdivision under the assumption that the units were not permitted and there were strict building rules in place. Now, obviously, we're under the Planning Act and, and the zoning and, and things have been changed. But in the initial subdivision, was having no units one of the criteria and then that's changed? Or were people a little bit duped when they bought into the area? Or is it all just hearsay? I, I do know, Councillor Milbourne, that it was answered in, in the original motion, um, uh, the pl uh, Planning Authority motion, by council that that was not the case. However, there may be someone... Uh, do we have Carolyn Mills here or Shane Warren with us? Yes, Carolyn here. Thanks, Carolyn. If you would mind answering Councillor Milbourne's query, please. Um, to my knowledge, there hasn't been a restriction on building units in the area, but sometimes real estate agents... Well, not real estate <laughs> agents, contracts um, of sale don't... I've specified things like that. I've seen before where a contract of sale has said that there can't be any units built. So perhaps it was that type of situation. I don't know. There's not, nothing in the covenants and the planning scheme, neither the current one nor the um, previous one, um, suggested units couldn't be built. And I suppose the point too, Carolyn, would be that there are other villas being built up there. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Does that answer your questions, Councillor Milborn? It does. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's it's the third time it's come up in my um, time as councillor, so you know it might, might be a, something we need to get out there to make it known that you know it is in the planning act and, and this will happen. There's only a few blocks left. Hopefully, they'll go through without too much problems. Thank you. Thank you. Was there anybody yeah. else that would like to speak on this at the moment? Alderman Hollister. If I may, Councillor Hollister. Oh, sorry. Councillor Hollister, I'll go, you'll go first, and Councillor Murphy, then we'll ask you to speak again. Councillor Hollister? Yes, I'd just like to congratulate um, Leon and the staff for um, formulating this so that it can be fixed tonight. Um, I think it's a good way to do this. If something comes up that needs to change, it's a good idea. It can be done in the afternoon and an email so that everybody's aware of what's going on. Um, so I just think it's 
that's been useful and uh, providing they can uh, comply with the conditions, it should be all right. Nothing further. Thank you. Councillor Murphy, did you have a question? I just wanted to clarify something for uh, Councillor Milburn in relation to her query. I'm not too sure whether she's aware, but the block next door to the west currently holds two units on it, and it is pretty much industry standard in relation to subdivision development that if a developer chooses, they will put in the necessary caveats to determine what type of building, if any, height restrictions building size, building types and everything else is usually done in the development stage. So any purchases of the land are made fully aware if that particular subdivision or development does have any caveats in relation or building restrictions uh, prior to purchase. So it's, uh, it's, it's buyer beware. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Was there any uh, further speakers on this motion, the second motion that's been put forward by Councillor Perry? A question from Councillor Hollister. Yes, Councillor Hollister. A uh, question to probably planning people. Um, I believe in the past there's been covenants put on like this in the past about no units and things like that. And I believe that when it comes to a court of law, they don't stand up. I may be wrong. Somebody can probably inform me. Thank you. Um, yes, Carolyn here. Is there have been some situations where covenants saying there are no units to be built have been placed on a property. Council doesn't have any jurisdiction over that, though. Um, that needs to go to court if somebody wants to dispute that. And I, and I believe in the past that, you know, it hasn't stood up in court, so I don't know how that works. But yes, I'm not sure about that. But Thank you, both of you. Um, anybody further that would like to speak? Yes, WV. Councillor. I'm sorry. Alexio. Who... Oh, Councillor Alexio, sorry. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I just want to uh, echo some of the thoughts there that uh, Councillor Perry made there. Um, look, there was, when I, when I first read through it, I could see that there was quite a fair few issues with this application. Um, but the amendments that's been made. Yeah, I'd like to commend uh, Councillor Perry for making those amendments and it's going to put us in line with all the planning authority requirements that we need. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Alexiou. Um, if there's no one further wanting to speak at the moment, um, I do have one question, if I may, through to you, Carolyn, if I may. Um, obviously, originally, there were issues and uh, the Council gave the applicant, as in 60 degrees, every opportunity to go back and make some changes. Um, so is this quite a normal procedure where you've given them the option to make the changes? They didn't. They wanted you to take the proposal as is, but now they've changed their mind after what? Seeing the report has come out and that was recommended not to go ahead? Um, I believe that... It was actually the developer that has approached council, not 60 degrees as the applicant. Right. So uh, I'm not sure of what happened in that situation. All right. But yes, okay. we, we will often ask people to change things so that it complies with the planning scheme. Yeah. I think you gave them every opportunity. So thank you. I appreciate that. And yes, it's commended to uh, Councillor Perry getting this all sorted since we only got the report on what Thursday morning. So there's been a lot of work put on behind the scenes and it's much appreciated. Um, Councillor Perry, if you'd like to close the motion. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, look, I, I do want to commend Council. I think the, the original decision, the refusal, was the correct one based on the information in front of them and based on the application presented. And I also note that um, uh, prior to acceptance of the application, the number of discretions were raised and, and the applicant... Uh, declined uh, to assist to 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 um, come back with 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 some renovations if you like and some revisions to to try and make the application fit but it's, it only came down to the to when the developer um, spoke to um, spoke to the applicant or the the designer uh, and realized that you know there are some issues there that could be fixed but they needed to be fixed before we could approve it 
Um, and that's that's how that's how it works, and that's how it's worked on this occasion. Uh, thank you all for your comments. I think um, it's 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 going to be a great it's going to be a great development. And now that we've got it within planning, within our planning requirements, uh, I think we can move on comfortably and um, and uh, approve it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I would like to ask all those in favour, say aye. 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 Any against? Uh, that would be considered. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. So what we would do now is moving on to um, section five, we will ask for the Mayor and Councillor Ennis to be brought back into the meeting. Thank you. They're on their way back in. Thank you very much, Mr Grivers. I'm sure someone can sing a song while we're waiting. No takers? That's a shame. I can see the Mayor there, but we can't hear you, Mayor. Sorry, just moving my screen back so I can see my... Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Ennis. I'm just waiting on Councillor Ennis, Mayor, but I'll hand that back over to you. Thank you. Okay, I'll go this way then. Okay, um, thank you. Um, we're still waiting on Councillor Ennis. Just... Uh, we are, yes, Mayor. Thank you. Back ah. in now. <laughs> okay. We're all back in the room. Fabulous. Um, Thank you, everyone. Moving on to item 5.1 is the stormwater asset management plan. Do I have a mover of the recommendation on page 78, please? So moved, moved. Councillor Milbourne. Uh, was that Councillor Milbourne and Councillor Laycock? Yep. Thank you, Councillor Milbourne. Uh, it's all there. And nothing more further to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Laycock. Nothing to add. Any comments, questions? Councillor Melbourne to close. Consider it closed. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Good. Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Item 5.2 is um, the bikes riding strategy for 2015 to 20, a report against the action list. Do I have a mover, please? I'm happy to move. Councillor Jarman. No, thank you. Do I have a seconder? Second, Councillor Ennis. Thank you, Councillor Ennis. Councillor Jarman, any comments? Um, look, I just have one question, um, and it's been raised to me by um, people aware that we're getting better and better all the time with um, different uh, bike trails are starting up. We've got the coastal pathway being discussed, and this bike riding strategy has been something that we've been working on since, as you can see, since 2015. Um, they want to know why, um, and I'm not sure who we put this through, um, Madam Chair, but perhaps through to, to Matthew, um, is they find it a bit abhorrent that all these new pathways and different cycleways that we're doing, we tend to make the pathway cement and they're actually not very nice to ride on. So with this strategy, do we aim to be on the roads as much as, we, as possible, Matthew, or I'm not sure who might answer me through this, if I could? Uh, well, I'll hand over to the general manager in the first instance. Thank you. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, that's an interesting question. I, I guess from a life cycle point of view, concrete um, certainly lasts a lot longer. And right. um, that's probably why we favour that type of material. Um, but, yeah, certainly, yeah, the asphalt does provide a softer surface. Um, so it has been I guess it's... From bike riders, 
yourself being a bike rider, I'm sure you'd understand what they're getting at. Going over concrete, and concrete is in sections, it's actually not a pleasant ride. I mean, it's different for people that are running and different for people walking. But when it comes to actual bike riding, um, it's a lot more pleasant to be on Asheville to more than often. So do we do we aim to be on roads more often by putting a line in if the roads are wide enough, or do we just look at footpaths first? That's a, I guess that's the question they're asking me to ask you. Yeah, I guess it's through you, Mayor. I guess um, it depends a bit on the situation and where it is. So the, the concrete path that I can think of is, is along Formby Road, which is partly cantilevered out towards the rail line, and, and I think concrete was the, the most suitable material to use there. Uh, if you look around the, the um, Victoria Parade, we do that in, in Asheville. It's, it's a lot smoother for cyclists and a lot easier for the runners on, on um, people's joints. Yes. Uh, so, so I think it depends a bit on the situation, what the most suitable material is. I, I think, um, you know, as a whole, I think we'd probably have more hot mix paths than what we would concrete. Um, as for using, as for separating the, the paths from the road, that's certainly our preference wherever possible to provide that separation because it's a, a much safer experience for the users. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Councillor Ennis as the seconder. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just had a question. I, I'm really pleased that... Um, comment first. I'm really pleased that uh, this uh, initiative's going ahead, particularly, you know, the opportunity for people to use bike riding, and we would have all noticed how much, uh, since this COVID-19, how many more people are using our pathways. So it's fantastic. Let's hope it sticks a bit for people's health. It would be fantastic. And the second second thing that I would say is um, a question. Uh, down near uh, Aiken Head Point, I noticed that uh, is signage going to be included down there where you come off the main pathway across to the Bass Strait Maritime Centre? Uh, you know where the seat is currently there and it's, that seat's going to be um, removed. Is there going to be signage there uh, talking about um, the Bass Strait Maritime Centre, you know, with a little bit of information there to um, allow people who are maybe tourists walking along the main path to understand that, oh, that is the actual Bass Strait Maritime Centre over there and this is why I need to go over there. So, yeah, that's the question. Is there going to be signage? Um, uh, if you look at if you look at the uh, at the map there, somewhere right near number five or number four there. Thank you, Councillor Ennis. I can see um, Mr. Skirving. Perhaps looks like he might want to answer that question. Yes, thanks, Mayor. Through you, certainly. Um if there's not planned to be a relocation of the current signage directing people towards the Bass Strait Maritime Centre, we will relocate it to that, that point. So there's a preference to get, I guess, all traffic coming across the coastal pathway link to cross Victoria um, Parade and Bluff Road at that point. It is a safer point for a crossing there, so we'll be prioritising access to the Maritime Centre from that location. So we'll certainly include one of the wayfinding totems at that location. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Skirving. Um, are there any comments, questions from any other councillors? Councillor Alexio. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of opinions out there just <clears throat> on my side of things, uh, the way I see things there. I think it's, it is a great idea that the cycling path is um, going ahead and it's going full steam ahead as well. But my concerns are probably... Um, in East Devonport in Wright Street, there is a cycle path leading down a very busy truck route, which I see quite dangerous and probably unsafe. And hopefully the strategy might just change a little bit as the new spirits come through and maybe that might change. Um, the cycling path is also used for running and walking as well. So uh, I, did, I did notice that uh, Councillor Jarman raised an issue there of the surface, but... 
I think you've got to keep everybody happy here that, that people use it for various reasons as well. Just my opinion on an attitude. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Alexio. And I know you have raised it, that uh, right street cycle path before. Uh, Mr Skirving, did you have anything to add on... Um, I guess just that, again, through you, Mayor, coming back to Council in the future, obviously this strategy document's coming to an end. We've still got significant works to deliver in terms of the coastal pathway and I guess also other potential projects linked to that in terms of some suburban links to the coastal pathway. But I would expect to see that, um, I guess, as we develop our strategy in this space, you may see a shift in the branding of, of this type of work more away from just a bicycle strategy to more an active transport strategy, um, recognising that these links can be used by all sorts of other recreational and, and, um, and, and different user groups as well. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I will ask Councillor Jarman to close the debate. Uh, thank you. Look, no, it's um, good that we're having an open um, discussion about this and uh, going forward, I'm sure that we're um, going to be improving on this strategy as we go through. Thank you. Thank you. I will put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are, there any aye. Are there any against? Motions carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 5.3 is a report on the waste strategy for 2018 to 2023. Do I have a mover of the recommendation, please? I'm happy to move that, Councillor Jarman here. Thank you, Councillor Alexio. Alexio, thank you, Councillor Jarman. Uh, yes, obviously, I'm, I'm very interested in how we're going forward. Um, discussing waste at all times. I suppose uh, a couple of things I wanted to bring up, if I may, um, through you, is uh, are we going to ensure, um, this is to the general manager, if I may, uh, we're going to ensure that our fact sheets go out with the rates for the next financial year, please, Mr General Manager? It was quite well received, I do believe, last time. Are we able to have that again? Encouraging and trying to get people to understand their recycling? Yes, through you, Mayor, yes. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. I'm really pleased to hear that. Thank you. Um, and I'm just wondering whether we get to that point where we need to really write a letter to the state government and talk about a, a deposit scheme. It's been talked about on a regular basis. I don't know whether it can be led from a council point of view. I, don't, I know it's a state government decision, um, but whether or not we could, you know, encourage... Um, and maybe speak at it at this level. Maybe we take it to the Cradle Coast Authority. I don't know. Um, what are your thoughts, Matthew? Uh, through you, Mayor. This is a, it's a um, yeah, it's an interesting topic. That one. We we do have a, a resolution that Council made just before the COVID pandemic that we have a workshop to look at banning single-use plastics in the city. So that's still on our list of workshops to reschedule once we get back together. So potentially we could talk about the um, container deposit system at the same workshop. Well, that would be great. I mean, that's my notice, a motion about the, the single-use plastic, so that's great. That would be good. And I suppose then we also would need to perhaps include at that workshop, it could be a large workshop, when we talk about FOGO. Again, seriously, um, I understand why it was knocked back last time. It was just too expensive per household. But perhaps that's something that we could bring to a, um, a workshop as well. So maybe we just make it a whole waste strategy workshop, um, Mr General Manager, that would be great. Um, I did notice, and I'm really pleased to see, that apparently um, Dalberton are encouraging us to have recycling bin toppers on page 123, I believe. Um, I, I haven't heard of them before, so I didn't really know. Was it 23? 123? Um, uh, down the bottom, 1.5. Work with event organisers improving waste management of public events. So, could you just explain to me how the bin toppers work, or, or do we will we get a, a photo about them, or some kind of explanation about how they work? Mr. Skirving's nodding. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, I can certainly provide some additional information there through you, Mayor. So, maybe if any councillors have attended, um, so for example, the Harvest Market in in Launceston, or some other events where the waste disposal bins do have temporary um, signage included in them, which gives a, a more uh, a fuller explanation about 
what different types of waste streams can be deposited in which bins. Excellent. Um, more generally, there, I guess there are other more permanent versions where there's just more visual cues in terms of public um, recycling or waste bins in terms of coloured toppers for, for the bins. So the surrounds may have a consistent um, colouring, but recycling the uh, deposit point in the bin is coloured differently depending on whether it's a waste stream or a recycling stream. But certainly the, um, and you often see them in office environments now as well, where there's a, a more fulsome explanation of what, what waste types can be deposited in certain bins. Excellent. Well, going forward, the more we can do, the, the, the better it is. So I was really pleased hearing about that. And my last thing, sorry, Mayor, um, perhaps also, um, Mr General Manager, when we talk about doing our waste workshop, um, item 3.1 on page 125 is about reducing litter and illegal dumping. One of my biggest hates is um, people going up into Durkins Road and dumping rubbish and going anywhere they like and dumping rubbish. Perhaps we could start a dob in a dumper so people could tell us and take photos and take photos of their cars and, and then they know that people are going to be watching them. And um, maybe it's going to be up to the community out there at large to be able to tell us what's going on and be to feel free to let us know. Um, so maybe we can talk that at a workshop level anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jarman. Um, just a further comment on, on the workshop. I, I know that um, Legat at a statewide level are involved in um, preparing and planning for the, uh, the uh, um, next lot of waste management and uh, have been doing a lot of work on that. So perhaps we could invite um, Dale Mester um, from Legat to join us either electronically or however for that workshop around um, where the national, where the statewide situation sits as well. That would be awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Councillor Alexio is the seconder. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I was going to raise a sense of issue regarding the alleged dumping, which is I noticed in the report that it's gone down quite a fair bit from uh, the previous year, so it's good that there's less dumping happening, but, yeah, we need to keep an eye on that um, and happy to go to a workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments, questions? Alderman Hollister. Alderman Hollister. Oh, Councillor. Councillor Hollister, Evan. With... Um, you've only got to walk through the mall and Southern Rook Street and the amount of chewing gum that's just fat on the footpath is disgusting. I don't know. If we can't ban chewing gum, we ought to at least have our responsible people enforce some fines because it's quite disgusting. If we get nice new footpaths and then people just go and make a mess of them. So something needs to be done. Whether it's enforcing the li liquor, the litter, I was saying liquor, Litter Act, you know, so that something can be done about it because it's, you know, we spend a lot of money on steam cleaning the footpaths and that, and then people just come along and just waste it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holster. Does anyone else have any comments? Hello, Councillor Ennis. Councillor Ennis. Will be awesome. I've heard him speak, and uh, he'll be he'll be very a very good uh, person to have at that workshop. Thank you. Any other comments, <sighs> Councillor Jarman? To close the debate. Thank you. Consider it closed. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion is carried unanimously. Item 5.4 is a tender report for uh, replacing ground lighting at a Maidstone Park. Do I have a mover of the recommendation, please? You do, Mayor. Councillor Laycock. Thank you. And the seconder? Councillor I'll second that, Councillor Alexio. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I've, I've got Councillor Alexio. Thank you. Councillor Laycock. Thank you, Mick. I'm sorry, am I? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, yes, I'm happy to move this that Devonport Electrical Services get the tender for replacing the lights at Maidstone uh, Park. They're well overdue. And as it says in our discussion notes, the lightings and uh, the lights, current lights are not meeting current standards. So this is well overdue. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Alexia. Uh, no, no more further comments there, Dave. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Just a question, if I may. Yes, Councillor Jarman. Thank you. Um, through you to Matthew, probably. Um, we can never go down the solar area with all these this this lighting. They're too they're too um, technical for solar. Uh, this is general manager. Yeah, I think the um, yeah the, the the strength or the the lux levels required for sport activity would probably be outside what um, you could get through a solar powered lighting system. No problem. Thank you. Are there any other questions, comments? Uh, okay. Yes. Councillor Ennis. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just uh, a couple of co one comment. Um, I would think that um, in the uh, in the report it says community engagement. Uh, they're worried about potential uh, light spill. Uh, I don't think uh, there'd be too much light spill by seven thirty at night. Uh, and that's when I generally think the lights would go off from Maidstone Park. Um, I couldn't see uh, Sprayton Footy Club training much later than than uh, seven thirty, and so I don't think that would be a concern. Uh, but one of the the other things that I that I noticed that says in the report that um, total forecast cost is one hundred and one thousand approximately over the current budget allocation and it's going to be accommodated by savings from other public open space projects. Um, is, have they been identified as yet? I'll go to the general manager please. Yeah I might, Mayor, I might just pass to Mr Skirving on that. There is a number of um, parks and reserves jobs that are under budget and I just can't specifically remember which ones. Thank you. Mr Skirving. Um, I guess the, the overall program is um, under budget significantly and the savings that have been identified are from projects that have been completed. And generally, they are projects that have been completed um, within their forecast allocation, but the project contingencies haven't been required. Um, so you'll see in this, in this project as well, there's a reasonably significant contingency which has been added to this pro project. So this is just, particularly in this instance, because of the poor ground conditions um, out, at, out at this location, there is potential for us to strike other issues. So there's been quite a significant contingency added. Um, and generally, the savings that have been um, made across the program year on year are uh, derived from those contingencies. It's not common that project scope would be reduced. Um, generally projects are delivered within the original scope, but it's the contingency allocations which we are able to um, aggregate across the course of the program and then reapportion to, to projects that may need it elsewhere in the program. Thank you, Matthew. I, oh, yeah, I was just wondering what, what would be cut. But, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, are there any other comments or questions? Councillor Perry, Madam Mayor. Councillor Perry. Yeah, just further to what uh, Mr Skirving said, um, the analysis of expenditure on other public open space projects has identified a likely saving of around 360000 across the 1920 program um, for the reasons that obviously Mr Skirving um, put forward. Um, just one question. I noticed the, the, grant, the grant that we've got, the grant that we received, and just going back to the notes, that the Sports and Recreation Major Grants Program we actually we actually were approved that in November 2017, which is like 30 months away. Are we are we still within the? Um, I know these things have a statutory statutory timeline on them. Are we still within the scope on that on that particular timeline? I'm, I'm sure we are. Otherwise, wouldn't we wouldn't be talking about it. But just wanted to confirm that if we could. Mr. Scurvy. Yeah, yes, so we are. Uh, my understanding is that they've been kept informed of the process along the way, and an extension has been granted on a uh, one extension yeah. has been granted on that that allocation already. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Laycock to close the debate. Consider it closed. Thank you. I will put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Aye
Are there any? Are there any against? The motion is carried unanimously. Item 5.5, .5, and I'll ask uh, Councillor Perry to leave the meeting. Right, I'll hit the red button. Thank you. Thank you. Just point of, point of order there, Mayor, if I may. Yes. Just in relation to the voting process, is it possible for the meeting convener to unmute all of the participants at once? To, instead of us all having to reach for the mute button at the same, you know, at the same time. Um, I don't know the answer to that question, Mr. Griffiths. You might have that response. Um, I believe through you, Mayor. There's a, a mute all option, but um, uncertain about the ability to unmute all. Oh, for me. <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, I'll take it. I'll take it under advisement, Councillor Murphy, and perhaps it's something we can, I can be sure about for next for future meetings if we need to meet in this way. I don't. I don't want to mute somebody who, and then we can't um, have a conversation. So. Yeah, um, agree, Matt. Agree. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Um, where are we at? Five point five. I'm happy to move it if you like, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jones. Oh. And Councillor Murphy to second. Thank you. Um, Councillor Jarman is the mover. Thank you. Um, this is great. This is, um, um, oh, what do they call it? Oh, I've got to find it. Leveling the Level, level the playing field, which is a great grant initiative and um, wonderful that East Devonport have now taken it up. So it um, only goes to show that uh, it's something that's required and uh, rather really pleased that they're going ahead with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Councillor you. Murphy is the seconder. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, just me, merely procedural. Um, well done to the East Devonport Football Club and their committee uh, in relation to pulling all this together and putting their application in to obtain the funding. Um, it's a good outcome for that particular precinct, nothing further. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yes. Councillor Ennis. Councillor Ennis. Uh, I, from memory, I, I thought some time ago, three uh, with this levelling the playing field support from the uh, from the uh, council, um, I sort of thought there was allocated uh, three different clubs were allocated to fifty thousand dollars each. But I noticed that um, in this, the council has changed it to seventy five thousand. Um, is there an explanation for that? I'm sure there is. I'll ask the general manager to clarify that, please. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, Council allocated 150,000 in its 1920 budget for level, as contributions towards the level of the playing field grants. I think back in April, May, when the budget was being prepared that year, there was a, a feeling that the junior soccer, the East Devonport Football Club, and the East Devonport Football Club all may be seeking a contribution, and there was a, a sort of on the basis of potentially 50k towards each. Um, but once the level of the playing field grants got finalised, they went through a two-round process. Um, it was clear that council didn't actually have to make a contribution to the junior soccer. Um, our support was only in kind, and at that point we were of the view that 50k should support the East Devonport project and, and 50 should um, cover the cost of the Devonport project and that would have resulted in a $50,000 saving from our overall budget, I guess, if you like, for that program. But, but like with any project, Council you know, carries the risk if there's overs or unders and, and in this case the East Devonport project's gone to, gone to the market and the, um, the wash-up is there that Council's contribution is 75, but um, that comes from within that budget of 150 so there's um, still sufficient funds there and and if the Devonport one comes in at 50 we'll be 25 ahead of um, there'll be a saving of 25 on the on the um, project the overall project budget thank you thank you yeah, thank you very much okay councillor Innes yes thank you thank you were there any other comments or questions councillor Alexio Thanks, Madam Chair. Just a comment. 
I think it's going to be a great, a great asset for the Devonport City uh, to have the East Devonport Club rooms uh, spruced up and fixed up. Um, it's it's also it's going to help East Devonport obviously, but it's going to also help the whole of Devonport as well. So we've got more more assets. The facilities are going to be better and probably helping all the other sporting events that maybe that ground can be used for as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Jarman, as the mover of the motion, I'll ask you to close, please. Consider it closed. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. I will ask Mr Griffiths to bring Mr uh, Councillor Perry back into the meeting, please. Councillor Perry is back in the meeting. Welcome back. Item 5.6 is the COVID-19 safety plan and recovery plan um, for council. Um, the recommendation is on page 135. Do I have a mover, please? I moved. Councillor Hollister. Do I have a second that, Councillor Laycock. Thank you. Councillor Hollister, did you have any comment? No, this is to receive and note the report, so nothing further to add. Thank you. Councillor Laycock. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as we'll have all read, the uh, government have launched this uh, workplace framework uh, to protect our health and safety. And, of course, in the notes, it also says that business, all our businesses are required to, to development to develop and implement this plan. Uh, at, the, at this uh, time we're at at the moment, I think it's very important uh, that we do pass this tonight, which I'm sure we will, and we work to the framework that the government have uh, put forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? If I may, Mayor. Councillor so Jarman. Um, yeah. yeah. Might be through to the general manager again, or, or Mr. Griffiths, who's got the uh, report. Um, look, just a congratulations to the staff on implementing this and getting it going. And what they've done has just been amazing because it's unprecedented. But um, uh, Matthew, do we have a clue when our office will be open to the public being able to come back in again? You know, there's these different stages, but it doesn't really mention us. I noticed that Kentish Council opened up. We don't have to copy any other councils. I know that. But um, do we have a clue of when we're going to be back open for business to a certain extent? Mr General Yeah, through you, Mayor. I guess we've got two points in our favour. One is that um, Service Tasmania do the majority of our transactions, so they're now open and, and up and going again. And the second one is that we've been able to transition very smoothly to working from home and continuing to provide services to the community through that way and, and minimising risk and and um, without any interruption to the to the delivery to the community. So I guess the advice from the government is, if possible, um, workplaces should continue to work from home until um, stage three, which is the middle of July. But we're working through um, planning for that now. And there potentially could be some areas where it's um, beneficial to bring employees back earlier. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Hollister, as the mover of the motion, would you close the debate, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I think it's important that we realise that there are a lot of people that are vulnerable in our community, and I think this safety plan and recovery plan is very important. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Item 5.7 is the draft general cemetery master plan for 2021 to 31. Do I have a mover of the recommendation, please? Councillor Milbourne. Thank you. Councillor Jarman. Councillor Milbourne. Councillor Jarman. Councillor Milbourne. I think this um, provides a very sympathetic view towards the cemetery and it should create quite a, a nice parkland as well. Thank you. Councillor Jarman? Yeah, I, I suppose I do have one question. Are we still... Um, who did the report here? 
Well, Carol Bryant and Matthew. Oh, then to Matthew Skirving, perhaps. Um, are we going to get to the point where we may consider putting some kind of small flower stem holder on each of the columns um, going forward? Um, Councillor, I know Councillor Jarman, this is basically about the old cemetery. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was about both of them. It's only about the old one? Correct. Oh, there you go. We'll talk later. Thank you. Thank you. Were there any other comments or questions? Yes, me. Just like Councillor Lake, I'd just like to make a comment that I'm pleased to see we do have uh, this draft master plan out there for the public consultation. Um, we've been concentrating a lot on Mersey uh, Vale, and that's important, but we mustn't forget our other cemeteries within our municipality. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Councillor Milbourne, yes. please. Oh, sorry, Councillor Ennis. Is I, that yeah, I hit the button. I, I just wanted to say it, it's, it's good that it's going to be actually out there for people to give them uh, you know, a month to... Uh, to have a look and uh, reply to and make comment on. So that's a good thing. It is part of our consultation. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, there's already been quite a bit of comment that's, um, I guess, form, helped to form the plan, but um, give people an opportunity now. It's actually in writing. Um, Councillor Melbourne to close. Thanks for everyone's um, discussion there, but consider it closed. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Item 5.8 is a report on the Belgravia um, management of scratch and um, in relation to COVID-19. Um, there's a recommendation on page 162. Do I have a mover, please? So moved. Councillor Jarman. Thank you. Do I have a second, Councillor? Second, yes. Yeah, uh, was that Councillor Alexio? Was that yes. Councillor? Yes. Thank you, Councillor Jarman. That's the mover. Uh, thank you. Yeah, look, these negotiations are necessary at this time, and. Um, uh, just terrible when things get closed down, especially something when um, it's such a healthy thing. So I can't wait to see it back up and running again. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Alexio. Nothing further, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? Yes, Mayor, you do. Uh, uh, Councillor Murphy. Yes, Mayor. Um, I'd actually like to um, propose an amendment to the recommendation. Or a change to the recommendation if the second mover and the seconder are happy. If uh, they read the report um, and they read the letter from Belgravia in relation to the recommendation states, note the terms of variation of agreement, approve the extent point two, uh, approve the extension of the current contract by exercising the five-year option contained within the contract through June 2028, 20, and agree to an additional one-year extension of the contract. If they note in the variation of agreement, it actually puts the council in an exposed position with regards to um, not receiving any profit until all losses uh, have been recouped by Belgravia. Hypothetically speaking, the, what that means is that the $6,000 that we've now negotiated in relation to um, the, the weekly or monthly um, payment instead of $26,000, that $20,000 will still be carried over and will be considered as a loss by them. So potentially what that does is the forecast $20,000 profit that would have been given to Council in the 1920 year or the 2021 year, um, they will then carry that on for a further six years where Council won't receive any financial benefit from Belgravia whatsoever. I think that should actually the note the terms of the variation agreement and in relation to uh, it should be capped until 2023 when the new lease agreement or the new five-year contract um, time frame starts. Uh, thank you, Councillor Murphy. I might just seek clarification from the General Manager. Um, is, that, is that the intent, Mr General Manager? 
Yeah, through you, Mayor. Yeah, just to clarify that, we, I guess, shared that, that concern that Councillor Murphy had raised and uh, went back to Belgravia and actually negotiated that it is capped at the end of 2023. There is a... Um, Although perhaps it could have been a little bit clearer in the um, the report, there is a note there under the variation of profit share arrangement, the heading on um, page 161, 61. yeah. just says there that it's capped, but it's um, yeah, good idea. Put it into the recommendation just to make it clear. Uh, well, I'm happy to have those changes put in via that. Thank you for bringing it up, Councillor Murphy. Um, I had read about it, but I, I agree that maybe we should be a bit clearer in our... Um, motion. Um, to change. So, um, I can see on the screen that um, Ms. Surtees has um, captured that amendment. Councillor Murphy, as the mover of that, are you happy with that? Is that yeah, happy there, yes? Mayor. Thank you. Okay, as so the mover and the seconder, Councillor Jarman, are you happy with the changes? Just reading it, bear with me. Note the terms of the variation, including the waiving of profit share only to the 2023 and that's a copy is it through what we had there before everything except the bit in red including the waiving of the profit share only has been added the very the current profit share arrangement outlined in the schedule of payments should we put outlined in the schedule of payments is the only thing if that's all right in brackets outlined in the schedule of payments so we've got something to go back to. Is that what you'd like, Councillor Murphy? Yeah, happy with that. Thank you. So um, as the mover, Councillor Jarman, are you happy with that? I am now. Councillor Alexio as the seconder. Happy with that, Madam Mayor. Okay. That makes uh, the changes I don't need to put to you as the mover and seconder. Are happy with that? Are there any yes. other comments or questions? I'll ask Councillor Jarman to close the debate, please. Consider it closed. Thank you. Thank you. I'll Sorry, put... Madam. I was muted and I didn't think I was. I just wanted to make a comment if I could. Thanks. Um, Sorry. Yes. No, that's all right. Yes, Councillor Perry. Um, just a, just a clarification, in the hibernation period dot points, um, Belgravia Leisure will invoice council at a rate of 2,162 per week. Yeah, I get that. Council will cease on charging monthly utility costs to Belgravia Leisure. Um, does, that, does that mean we're inheriting the utility costs until they get back up and running? And if so, that's fine. If so, how much are they? How much, how much do we envisage they might be? I suppose it's a question to the general manager. General manager? Yeah, through you, Mayor. It's um, it's pretty clear what the Aurora costs are. Um, in regard to the gas costs, we're still negotiating with TASGAS on our contract position on those. But worst case is we're looking at about 3000 um, per week in total. We, we're hopeful of coming uh, under that. 3000 a week in total, including the 2162 that's right, yeah. Right, yeah. All right. Um, I'd also like to, to congratulate the general man manager and his team for, for negotiating such a, well, such a good deal in the circumstances. I mean, we don't, obviously don't want them closed and we don't want to be paying money. We don't have to, but the starting point is around 26000 and the general manager and his team held their nerve and got it back to 2162 and I think they deserve credit for that. So, well done. And also... Well done to Councillor Murphy for picking up that point, which I had as well, um, and changing the recommendation to reflect it. So, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Um, I think I had asked you to close already, Councillor Jarman. Do you have anything else to add? Oh, no, that's fine. Um, look, they'll be open on the 13th of July, hopefully, and uh, under restricted um, measures. So, hopefully, we can just get it all rolling and getting going. But by the 13th of July, they'll be open. So, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Item 5.9 is Devonport Social Recovery Action Plan, um, which has been developed by our, our um, community services team. Do I have a mover of the recommendation on page 166, please?
So I move. Councillor Innes. Councillor Murphy. Oh, sorry, I could hear, but I couldn't say Councillor Murphy. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Milbourne. Yeah, Thank you. Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Mayor. Look, pretty much a necessity in this time. Um, it's a draft Devonport Social Recovery Action Plan. It's a good one. There's been a lot of work put into it, so congratulations to those people involved in that. Um, I think it'd be interesting to see how it goes, um, I, whether we get the level of participation that we, we would envisage that we get from this particular plan. Um, We'll wait and see. I think uh, people will be very nervous to start with, but at least we've got something in place. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Milbourne. Thanks, Mayor. It's great to see that we have something in place to move forward and um, just congratulations to the team that put this forward. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Ennis. Councillor Ennis, thank you. Yeah, I think it's important that we have a plan. Um, plans can always be adjusted. We're in a situation where we're unsure of uh, you know, how things are going to go. So uh, having something like this is a good start. So well done. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Uh, Councillor Perry, Madam Mayor, I'd, I'd just like to comment on that is an A-grade team we've got there. So we're in good hands. Agreed, absolutely. Um, in, any other comments? I'll ask Councillor Murphy to close the debate. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, just reiterate, or I agree with Councillor Perry, um, a lot of work has gone into this and we, we do have some very, very qualified and skilled people in that area. Consider it closed. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Item 6.0 is information, and I thought I might seek your indulgence to perhaps move item 6.1, 6.2 and 6.3 as one item, given that they're all information um, from various people. Um, if that's OK, I would ask a mover for that, please. Sorry, Mary, I move, uh, Councillor Murphy is the mover, Councillor Jarman the seconder. For item 6.1, 6.2 6 and 6.3, uh, those reports. Councillor Murphy. Yeah, look, as you stated, Mayor, it's merely procedural. Um, it has probably been very difficult for you to uh, undertake the normal levels of duties that you do. You do so well. Um, so... There's nothing really further than it had. Thank you. It has been an interesting time. Councillor Jarman. Yes, well done, Mayor. Um, I do have a question through you then for item uh, 6.3, then the general manager's report um, to Mr Atkins. You had a meeting with the developer of the Devonport showgrounds. Are we going to get an update from you either um, at a later stage on what's going on there? Would be nice. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I was contacted by the developer. He's um, putting together some final um, documentation with a view of coming to present. To, he's asked to come and present to council in coming weeks. So as soon as we get him locked in, we'll, um, we'll get him to come and see councillors. And that's one developer now, not two. Um, yeah, he didn't make any comment on the on um it was simon that i met with yes all right oh that would be good it'd be uh, nice to see what what's happening there thank you nothing further me thank you are there any other comments or questions around those items in that case i'll ask councillor murphy to close consider it closed thank you i'll put the motion all those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. And I thought I would seek your indulgence to move item 6.4, 0.5 and 0.6 as one as well, given that they are all reports from various departments. 
If anyone's happy to move that. Yes, happy I'm to move that. Councillor Charman. Councillor Perry. Perry. Thank you. Councillor Charman. Um, well, I've, I've just got two questions then, or two comments. Thank One you. One was page 199, apparently. Uh, uh, through you to the general manager, probably, Matthew. Um, there was some TASRAIL recovering income reimbursement from TASRAIL. Um, so it's page 199 at the bottom. It says April. Um, the amount 32,000. How much did we get from TASRAIL? Was it most of that component? Matthew, you're on mute. <laughs> On the bottom of page 199. Yes. Yeah, the parking statistics and then... Down the bottom there, it's a uh, income reimbursement from TASRAIL incident. We all know what the TASRAIL incident was. Mm. Look, we'll take that on notice. All right. Oh, Mr Skirving's got his hand raised. Oh! oh. <laughs> Mr Skirving. Through you, Mayor, there was some lost uh, parking revenue due to some, some of the parking bays being out of action for a period of time while the repair works were underway. Oh, there you go. Thank you. So we've just and recently invoiced um, TAS Rail or their insurer for the repair works that were undertaken as well as that, that lost income. Which which isn't isn't the full thirty two thousand amount, it's a no. it's a component of that. Thanks. I was just interested. Thank you. Um, and look, well done to all the staff working on everything from the arts to everything that's been closed down, all our facilities being closed down. The staff would have just been so lost. But the way that they've coped and done everything was amazing. And just, again, a big congratulations on the Diamonds of Devonport, seeing it is mentioned there in 6.6. Um, our our um, International Women's Week was great. Maybe there needs to be an International Men's Week. I'm sure that the boys would like that. Um, we do it really well, so maybe the guys, their turn. Um, but the wellness, I just wanted to really mention Wellness Wednesday and what they've been doing on Facebook has been really um, heartening. And I just want to congratulate the staff. You've got to think outside the square when you're in a situation like this. And just what they've been doing behind the scenes has just been amazing. So congratulations. Please pass it on. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Perry is a seconder. Uh, uh, yeah, that's no, all been said. Nothing, nothing further to add. <laughs> good reports, detailed reports, and uh, keep up the good work, everyone. Thank you. Were there any comments or questions around any of those items? Yes, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Ennis. Councillor Ennis. I just noticed that people have mentioned uh, parking and uh, uh, just per chance I happened to be down the uh, CBD today and uh, funnily enough, most of the car parking uh, metres were full. So that's great news to see that people are out and about and uh, supporting our retailers in the CBD. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Councillor Jarman to close the debate. Oh, thank you. Consider it closed. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 6.7 is the annual plan progress report to the 30th of April. Do I have a mover, please? Yes, I move, Councillor Perry. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Milbourne. Thank you. Councillor Perry. Uh, it appears all the um, all the actions will be achieved on time. There's no issue. It's been identified, so it's all steady as, as it goes till 30 April. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you very much. Councillor Milbourne. All there. Thank you, Mayor. Nothing further. Thank you. Are there any comments, questions from any of the other councillors? I will ask Councillor Perry to close the debate. Uh, consider it closed. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? 
The motion is carried unanimously. Item 6.8 is a report on elected members, elected members expenditure for March and April. Do I have a mover, please? You do, Mayor. Councillor Laycock. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Seconder. Councillor Hollister, I have. Thank you. Councillor Laycock. Nothing to add, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Hollister. Uh, it's all in the report. Nothing further. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from anyone? Yes, uh, Councillor Ennis. Councillor Ennis. I, I noticed uh, uh, there's a Councillor Ennis in here with one S. Um, I'm Councillor Ennis with two S's. So maybe that needs to be just slightly amended. Okay. On page where? Uh, what page is it? Uh, 250. Ah, yes, I see. Uh, 254, isn't it? I see it. Yes. Yep. It was correct on the next page, so I was confused. Thank you. Uh, two, two Thank you. Are there any other comments? Yeah, Mayor, uh, just Councilor a question. Murphy? Yes. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, just looking at that, we're Councillor Ennis with one S. Um, Councillor Alexio and Councillor Hollister look to have attended the same thing. Um, did you see, is there the, the travel for professional development? Was there something else in relation for that, was there? From Councillor, I thought if they all went to the same thing, it all would have been the same. Just that discrepancy, is there a reason for that? Can we take that on notice? I'll ask Councillor. Oh, I can make a comment if you, if you like. Uh, that's... Uh, Travel expenses. I, cl I claimed it. Thank you. Yep, okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, are there any other comments or questions? I will ask uh, Councillor Lake. No, 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 Sorry, no, no. Councillor Alexio, was that you? Sorry, Madam Man, yeah. Just on that point. Um, I must have missed uh, to travel to, to put my travel down. Is that correct? Uh, that's something you probably need to take up with the general manager. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Laycock. To close. Consider it closed, Mayor. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any aye. against? Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Item 6.9 is the financial report for the year ended April 2020. Do I have a mover, please? So moved, Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Do I have a seconder? Seconder, Councillor Alexio. Councillor Alexio, thank you. Councillor Murphy. Yeah, look, it's merely procedural, Mayor. There is some um, some variances there in relation to um, where things will be recognised in relation to our um, value of swaps, recognised at the year end, um, and obviously some others there that uh, we won't be able to recover some of those internal charges. But anyway, other than that, it's going to be interesting to see what it looks like at the end of the financial year. Yes, it is, along with everybody else's financial report, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Alexio. Nothing further to add, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions around the financial report? No, me. Councillor Laycock? Sorry, no. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'll ask Councillor Murphy to close the debate. Thank you. Councillor Murphy, can you close, please? I couldn't get my mute button to work, Mayor. I was trying vigorously. <laughs> Consider it closed. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? Thank you. The motion's carried unanimously. That being... 
Um, 7.0 uh, Section 23 Committee reports. There are none. We're moving on to 8.0 is moving into closed session. Do I have a mover, please? 6.37. So moved. So moved. Councillor Milbourne, Councillor Hollister, are there any comments? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Hollister? Nothing to add. I will put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Are there any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Um, Mr Griffiths, do I need to give a moment to make sure that we are in close session?